Technological revolution for the past few years has been dramatically altering not just the look of classrooms but how education is imparted. Hello and welcome today on Education Dialogues to discuss the impact of technology on education. I'm joined by Mr. Deepak Mehrotra, uh, Managing Director of Pearson India. Thanks for talking to us, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, sir, in the past few years we have seen that with the introduction of different kinds of uh, technological especially gadgets like smart boards and internet based device application based device uh, the manner in which education is imparted has changed completely from what it was 10 to 15 years ago or uh, much earlier so how has that really changed and where do you see this going you know the uh, there has been a dramatic change you know there was a time when chalk and cheese was the only method that followed uh, you could have uh, classrooms run under a tree with just a small blackboard there to a completely different end of the spectrum today where you have uh, the classes in a virtual class is getting delivered to you from a laptop or a tablet your instructor is sitting in a different continent and is maybe talking a synchronous a synchronous with you so that's the other end of the spectrum but there's somewhere in the middle is where you're seeing many more uh, uh, population of schools large higher education institutions so sort of gravitating the fact that you have a very large young cohort which is very keen on adopting technology uh, they are more comfortable being on the net than in the physical world you obviously have to go and be where the learner is right. so and that means that you your entire delivery your instruction right. your pedagogy has to shift to aligned to this changing environment around you so and so learning is also no more an isolated experience absolutely. now so you so not just that so the role of the teacher is changing and the teacher needs to deploy technology to build engagement excite motivate a child to you know learn on an ongoing basis two learning need not stop in the classroom right. because a lot of these data points are coming to the child because they are on the net and there is this shared learning and there is this peer group that they are engaging and constantly talking to learning is happening all around so continuous learning and the role of the classroom and the teacher using technology has to change and that's you can see some of the progressive institutes spend, spending time effort energy in terms of enabling that as the provider of some of these capabilities our role is also changing so earlier we were trying to provide the hardware and the capability around we were focusing on creating content that would go in now our focus is on okay there is great content we are not the only source of content. There is right. a lot of uh, free content available from multiple, multiple kids. So sources. how do we deliver pedagogy? Right. The science of learning, how the child learns, how the higher education learning should happen, and then training the instructors around that space to deploy technology in a, in a, in a meaningful manner right. to make the learning experience complete. India, of course, uh, has a huge population of young people. Uh, of students who are in schools and colleges who would be in schools and colleges uh, in next five, five, four, five years. Uh, keeping that in mind, what are the kind of avenues that Pearson is looking to explore uh, in the field? Our big focus is around building institutional capability in the school system. So can we create a product and a solution which is both analog, has the elements of digital capability, which provides the learners and enables the instructors okay. and the administrators to ensure that you deliver a far more stronger efficacious outcome so that's one a big focus for us is also to start getting into managing and delivering uh, learning by managing schools and we believe that's a great possibility because uh, that gives us the right insight on how learning is happening in a classroom so that we can bring that into the way we actually create these how exactly do you feel that in your opinion uh, how can digital learning uh, impact learning in uh, schools among school children you need to, our challenge today is uh, both infrastructure and I would say when I talk infrastructure, it's both human as well as the, the physical side. Uh, so the human part comes in from the way we train our instructors to you know, embrace technology right. and the role the change that they're experiencing, how do we prepare them to do that? The infrastructural piece is coming in from the fact that uh, in spite of all the foray that the telecom industry has made, our internet penetration is still fairly low. The robustness of inter current internet connectivity is a still a question mark outside of the top 20 cities. So that part becomes a challenge. But once you fix this, uh, there is enough and more in terms of you have five, in five inches fab blades, seven inches fab blades available, which can get incorporated into the way the delivery happens. From smartphones 
interactive devices wherein personal learning paths can get defined for each instructor, uh, each child, and right. we could actually move that way. Uh, progressively, a digital kind of environment enables an instructor to look at each child in an individual manner, right. enable the child to follow an individual personal learning path, and both uh, the gifted and the challenged children could get treated differently and get the right kind of attention in that kind of environment. To me, that is a, uh, is a super idea and that's, that's something that works brilliantly using technology. Right. You are uh, talking about that, you did mention a couple of challenges uh, that are acting as roadblocks, for example, uh, internet penetration. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the matter of fact is that India has one of the biggest mobile phone users, you know, uh, base uh, across the world. So that there is perhaps an opportunity there as Fantastic well. Fantastic one. Yeah. Fantastic one. And that's right. where uh, we encourage, uh, our, in our own schools, we encourage uh, uh, children to find a way to, uh, you know, if you're going to be spending most of your time browsing on your Facebook mom's and, yeah. mom's phone, yeah. you may not have a phone until class nine or ten. Right, right. So if you're going to be monopolizing your mom's phone, can we give you something on your mom's phone right. which continues your process of learning that you have started in the class? So right. that uh, using all of that is fantastic opportunity. Mr. Marotra, also talk to us about the kind of plans uh, that Pearson has for higher education for colleges and universities. You know, that's a very exciting space. Uh, especially, look, the great opportunity for us is to connect the great institutions globally with the learning needs of the learners in, in, this, in the country. A gross enrollment ratio of 30 is something that everybody talks about, but uh, to get there, you will need to double the capacity of the largest university system in the world. In the world. Not possible, right. not happening in the next 10 years. So yes. You need almost 15% of your GDP to get there. Now, but if you were to start deploying technology, if you were to start bringing in online, distance, and blended learning into the play, right. bringing the best of institutions and connecting them to the needs of the learner, I think that's a fantastic opportunity. And that's something that we believe because of our global experience, our fantastic relationships we have, our understanding of pedagogy, our close monitoring of what the industry needs, we can create something. So we just uh, brought in a relationship with Cornell into play in India. Uh, we right. launched a program uh, very recently yeah. and we're talking about that. There is much more that can get done by bringing some of the greatest institutions, both domestic right. as well as global, to start offering programs for our learners in this space. So that's a fantastic opportunity. Right. The way uh, you start engaging, because the workforce of today will not be ready for the challenges uh, and the opportunities that the changing economy is going to throw up in 10 years from now. Right. For that, it needs to be retrained. It needs to acquire completely different set of skills and you cannot get off from work to do that. And this kind of opportunity fanta is fantastic. You have a huge shortage of uh, instructors and good quality teachers, right. but you have great curriculum and content available. Right. Why can you not build efficacy, uh, building assessments and engagement for instructors to improve the learning Thank environment. Thanks for talking to us, uh, Thank Mr. Virotra. Thank you so much. On that note, we will wrap up this segment, but you don't go anywhere as there's a lot more coming up on the other side.